Okay, today I want to talk about some of the really good signs that you start noticing when you're on the right track in recovery and you're making really good progress. One of those that came to mind was when you start acknowledging or recognizing that the things that you used to do in your eating disorder as completely insane and crazy, it's a really good sign. So for example, when I used to... um, you know, feel like I had to go on this exact same route every single day on a walk. And it had to be the exact amount of time that I took on that walk. And I couldn't come back 30 seconds earlier. um, Or else I would just have so much anxiety about it. When I was breaking things like that, and I was starting to get into a healthier place, mentally, I would look at that and be like, that's insane. Why would I, why do they feel like I have to do that at the same time every day? the same route. Like what if I wanted to go on a different route or what if I didn't want to go for a walk or who cared? Who cares if I finished a walk earlier? And I would start thinking about like how crazy that stuff was. Or I would think about like all of the parties or even like going out to eat where I would like stand as soon as we were like done eating, I'd like stand up and like how awkward that is and weird. And, and I was able to start seeing like all the weirdness and all the, the odd behaviors that I thought were so normal when I was not well, because my eating disorder was just a master at rationalizing that kind of thing and thinking, no, it's normal. It's healthier to stand all the time. It's a good thing, right? No, it's normal to like go for a walk every day at the same time for the same amount of time on the same route. Like somehow I was able to justify, or at least my eating disorder made me think that these things were all justified. Um, Another really good sign that you're doing well in recovery, you're making progress is when you can eat when others aren't eating, right? When you can recognize that perhaps you have a spouse who, you know, doesn't ever eat breakfast and you're someone now that always eats breakfast and you think how weird that I even cared that he didn't eat breakfast and how weird that I never ate breakfast. I love breakfast. Why would I not eat breakfast? That's a weird, I can't believe I went so many years not eating breakfast, right? And so I was able to start like seeing all of these things that just were so odd, and just didn't make sense. And why would I do that? It's like my brain started just operating more normal. Um, another sign would be hearing about people's diets or people um, exercise or workout routines, especially with the holidays coming. This will be one that if you can sit at the table and you're listening to these things and you're going, I'm so glad that's not me. That's a really good sign. Now, if you're sitting at the table and you're crawling out of your skin and you're feeling highly anxious and oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, what you can do in that moment is obviously remind yourself that you're you're in um, you're on a different path. Stay in your lane. You're working on something completely different. You have a different genetics on these people. You know that whatever they're talking about hasn't brought you happiness, and just kind of re- try to reframe. But if yeah, you're sitting at the table and you're feeling like so sad. Sorry, feel bad that you guys are all obsessed with this still. Not that you're better than them, but just like because you've had to kind of do the work and realize that that's not, you know, the most important thing. And there's so many other things that are more important or exciting or interesting to talk about. Also a very good sign. Um, Another one would be um, when you can look at your body and you are just kind of like, you don't have a panic attack. You might notice that it's very different, right? And you're going to see that you have fat on your body, it's going to be visible and you're going to see that you have curves and rolls and maybe your face looks different and you're going to be able to see it and be like, "Mm, yeah, it's a little different, but, and you immediately start thinking about, but I can go on vacations and I can sleep in and not have to like get up early and hit the gym and I can eat breakfast in bed and I can go out on dates with my husband and eat whatever I want. And I can an order off a menu without modifying. You start kind of going down the list pretty quickly of like all the freedoms that you're gaining from recovery and be like, yeah, willing to deal with it. (laughs) And you just kind of keep on going with your day. So those are all just really good signs that you're doing some really good work in recovery. And it may be that you still have kind of thoughts that come and go, or you may still have things that um, cause you anxiety, but if you stick with it and you continue to do the things that you know you need to do, um, not giving in to any eating disorder behaviors, those thoughts eventually subside. And so it's not like you're even having to fight them or deal with them or having them, you know, enter your mind daily. Um, it's just sort of like a thing of the, it's a thing of the past. It's something that you remember. I very much remember being sick and I very much remember my recovery, but it's not something that I'm still fighting every day and thinking, you know, at the holiday table, oh my gosh, don't freak out. Everyone's talking about their diet. Oh, you know, to me, it's just, I don't even have to say stay in your lane, Becky, stay in your lane. It's just kind of like, this is, 
are we really talking about this again? Oh, boring, right? So if you're in recovery and you're not quite to that state yet, look forward to that because it does come. Oh, another one that I forgot to mention was when you see somebody who looks smaller than you, right? And when, when you're in recovery, you're still noticing that, I think, at least if I recall, I still would like notice people that may have possibly had eating disorders or people that maybe looked, right? If, if, if you're going based off of a, oh, that person looks just because they are underweight, you just assume that they have an eating disorder. Um, if you if you are seeing that, you just don't care or perhaps even better, you feel bad. You feel really bad for people. I remember being in um, the grocery store in recovery and seeing someone that was clearly emaciated, right? Clearly just not well. And in the past that would have freaked me out and, oh my gosh, she's smaller than me and look at her. She's, and I would have gone crazy. But instead seeing that, I remember having like the first moment, the first experience I had like this in recovery where I was like, oh my gosh, my heart broke for her because I felt so much more like strong and solid and confident and I was feeling so much better. And I wasn't a bigger body, you know, relative to where I started. And I was able to see that and like my heart went out for her, went out to her. I wanted to give her a hug. I wanted to like explain to her that there's a way out that you can get through this. That's a really good sign. If you can do that, if you can see that and actually feel sad, not pity them, but just feel sad and feel that kind of, um, um, love, like love towards them. Like you want to be able to help them. You can empathize with them. That's a really good sign rather than feeling threatened, rather than feeling like, Oh my gosh, I've got to, you know, be more committed to my eating disorder. If you're having that reaction, check yourself and be like, what are some things that I can do to really launch me further into recovery so I can feel more confident. And I can say that these mental states are actually happening and changing. So hope that helps. Okay. Bye.